I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love I am a noisy cone a clanging cymbal And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge If I have all faith so as to remove mountains But have not love But have not From the title of the book, I know you already have some ideas on what we are about to discuss. The I Love You book is a very beautiful book that people can easily relate to, especially young people. Nowadays, it is important for us to discuss and learn about such issues as youth. In fact, one of the most overused and yet misunderstood phrases in the English language is, I love you. In this book, we will be talking about relationships. We will discuss on how will we succeed and deepen our relationship despite challenges. And most importantly, ask questions. How can we also glorify God in our relationships? This book will not only cover our fellow men's relationship, but also how can we deepen our relationship with our greatest lover? Because our love for our God is also in trouble. The I Love You book is also God's words and message to us. It will help us to understand the true meaning of love, and we will tenderly and truly say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Not just to our partners today or in the future, but also to our greatest lover from above, our God.
Welcome and good morning to all of us. Good morning, gising na at ishare na ang virtual na ito sa ating mga minamahal na kapatid. This is episode 14 of Unconditional, a weekly morning devotion for young people seeking and rejoicing in the unconditional love of God. Ito ang programang itinataas ang Diyos, ang tunay na pag-ibig. Ako ang inyong ate Lorraine, nais kong ibahagi sa inyo ang Bible verse na ito. Ang John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. Today's, today's episode is on chapter 14, The Incompatible Couple, Samson and Delilah. We encourage everyone to share this virtual meeting to your friends right now. Share, share the link. You might just save a soul because this program aims to lead uh, Christ uh, or to lead others to Christ, a refuge in our strength. While waiting for others, reminding our viewing friends for the following. We still have two more slots for season two book and other surprises. Just continue to uh, be with us during the live and comment your reflections. 50 Gcash or load will be given anytime for the first time viewers or sharers. Kaya invite pa more, share pa more para mas maraming taong matutulungan or mablast. Free soya milk and soya taho for those who will first complete 14 meetings for Baguio area. Just share your unique reflections using the word of the day. Sasabihin po mamaya. And please take note, you will uh, also should at least comment your greetings or reflections, mga kapatid, every meeting for attendance recording. And at this very moment on, mga kaibigan, um, for our opening prayer, let's bow down our heads. Our most ingressed in the Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning that you have given to us. Thank you for waking up, uh, waking us up. Thank you for giving us another uh, beautiful life to be with you. And at this time, uh, I pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be with our devotion, that uh, we will only uplift the name of Jesus and we will see the love of Jesus. It is the morning devotional of the Apple. Lord, we give it to you and we also bless those who will view this later or uh, kasama po namin sa live. Be with us so that we may see the love of Jesus and also we will uh, share it to other people as well. For this is all we ask in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to um, call Brother Carlo if nandiyan ka ba? So that he will introduce to us. Okay, Naran so that he will introduce to us our speaker for today. Brother Carlo. Or before that, um, I forgot. <laughs> we will uh, review our last meeting para malaman natin kung ano nga ba or maalala natin yung napag-aralan natin noon. Ano nga ba yung napag-aralan natin noon, Brother Carlo? Hello. Uh, Hello. Good morning, Carlo. Good morning, good morning sa ating mga viewers dyan and uh, to our uh, brothers and sisters. So, last Wednesday, we discussed the seven steps in the process of reconciliation, which is the, the first is incarnation, crucifixion, intercession, reunion, millennium, restoration and decision and if you are curious or didn't watch this episode yet uh, then i encourage you to go to our channel to our youtube channel and watch it so i'll introduce you our uh speaker this uh, morning so it is a privilege to have with us today a special guest medyo uh nakaka-intrigue ang background no so ang ating speaker ay uh, isa siyang teacher sa Wuhan so siguradong maraming tayong mat mga tanong mamaya so that is because before the COVID-19 outbreak until now she is working as a science teacher at Wuhan China so she is a teacher at Wuhan China no 
So she is an active member of SDA ASI and a missionary as the spirit leads. Uh, I welcome po sa Oasis Advent Youth PH si Sister Benilin Wang. And sisters in Christ, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation that you have given me for this program and to be part of this program. May we be blessed with this wonderful lesson for us today. We are now down to chapter 10 and it is entitled The Incompatible Couple. For this incompatible couple, they are Samson and Delilah. So let's start with the main character of our lesson for today. So who is Samson? Yes, okay. So throughout the history, we already know who is Samson. So Samson has become actually the legendary for his strength and a proverbial prowess. He is actually the Superman of our Old Testament who could actually destroy a lion with his bare hands can also talk he's actually the talk of his town and the pride of his nation so more than that he was also the curse of the Philistines why because they are they are actually scared of him the Philistines are actually the enemy of the Israel but despite his strength Samson has serious weaknesses and one of this was women so as we can see on the picture and also what we have learned from this book it says the union of Samson and Delilah is a pure prescription of disaster. Let's see why. So now we will move on to the main story. I love storytelling. I hope everyone loves it too. So let's start with Samson and Delilah. They are actually known to be infamous, but at the same time, really famous lovers in the Bible, probably because they are a classic case of almost everything that can go wrong in a relationship. So by the time Samson met Delilah, he had already had a disastrous marriage with a Philistine woman. She had nagged him for a secret of his in order to betray his trust to her people who were enemies of Israel. Her betrayal led to many deaths, most of them inflicted by Samson in revenge on the Philistines for their betrayal of him. This led to a cycle of violence in which the Philistines killed Samson's wife and her father, and Samson killed even more Philistines, eventually killing a thousand of them with the jawbone of a donkey. This was good for the Israelites, who rejoiced at anything that made their Philistine overlords weaker. But to modern eyes, Eyes, it looks like a sick relationship. Nating sa panahon natin ngayon, parang yung buhay ni Samson ay napakapuno ng ano ng action at romansa dahil nga addicted siya sa mga Philistine women. Still, Samson did not make his mistakes. In our story, he falls in love with Delilah, another Philistine woman, who proves just as, as treacherous as the one he had married earlier. No sooner had Samson hooked up with Delilah, then the Philistines were at her to find out the secret of his friends so they could subdue him. So, ang nangyayari dito ay ang mga Philistine woman, nakikipag-relasyon din sila pa kay Samson para malaman nila yung sikreto niya. At pag nalaman nila yung sikreto ng kanyang kalakasan, ay pwede nilang matalo ang mga Israelites. So, let's continue. As we read about Samson's lying to Delilah three times about what will take away his strength, and Delilah each time trying it out and shouting, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. We may wonder why Samson would ever tell her the truth. Of course, the Philistines who intended to capture Samson were hiding. And we are not told that they came out on this three occasions. Perhaps Samson did not realize Delilah was laying a trap for him. Siguro napagod na rin si Samson na lagi na lang nagsisinungaling kay Delilah, kaya binigyan na niya yung pinakasikreto niya. Regardless, Delilah eventually wore Samson down with her continual nagging and prodding day after day. Finally, Samson told her the truth, that his great strength came from his consecration to the Lord as a Nazarite, and that if his hair were cut, he would become as weak as any other man. So we can say that Samson is really special. We may not have the strength of 10 men, but each of us 
has developed some strength of character, especially in those areas where we have turned to the Lord for guidance and help. Yet, don't we also make the same mistakes over and over again? Hindi ba parang tayo rin naman si Samson? We always give in to Satan's um, way of trapping us into temptation. So once we have gotten some addictive habit, actually, we are called addict too, not only Samson. So Samson is actually us who is also addicted to steam. He is addicted with Philistine women, but the Philistine one is actually the steam itself. So we seldom quite cold turkey and never look back. Much more often, we struggle again and again with the same shortcomings that have been plunging us for years. We are actually doing this every day, unconsciously or consciously. For all the spiritual strength we have or we may have developed over the years by going to church, reading the Bible and other spiritual books and so on, when the rubber hits the road, we are still fallible and mistake-prone humans. So Samson's story is actually our story. This is the heart of the matter for today's lesson. To refer to another mighty hero from mythology, our Achilles heel is represented by Delilah, our nature. Delilah is that simple, stubborn, bad habit that we continue to fall into even when we have seen its destructive effects. Diba? Alam naman natin magkakamali tayo, sige lang. Doon pa tayo, dun, alam naman natin, hindi, hindi pwede sa atin na pumunta dyan, pero punta pa rin tayo. So this is really destructive effect. So we know that the excuses and arguments that we use to justify it are still false. But when we feel that allure, when that um, desire comes over us, when something or someone pushes our buttons, we throw aside all our spiritual principles, ignore everything our rational mind tells us, and surrender to the moment once more. We are as weak as Samson. Samson's story also does not have a happy ending. This too is realistic. When we continue to live in ways we know we shouldn't, it hurts both others and ourselves. Just as Samson both killed others and was eventually killed himself in his revenge against the Philistines. So for us, it sometimes does take the breakup of a marriage, the loss of a job, the destruction of family relationships, and close friendships to wake us up. If, like Samson, we do not hear these warnings, things will continue to go downhill. So the old life must die before we can begin a new one. Just as Samson died, so that the Israelites could go on to the next step in their development as a nation. This story was written a long time ago. This story is also our story. We can only hope that in the death of the old, what dies in our old attitude of pride in ourselves and the false notion that what matters is what we believe and not whether we live by it. So this attitude of belief without action of religious faith that is not expressed in kindness toward others is what the Philistines represent. Are we the Philistines or are we the Israelites? And this attitude is just as deadly to us today as the Philistines were to the Israelites in Samson's day. It's time we indulge once more in that bad habit or yield to that old weakness. We demonstrate once more that our beliefs must be backed up by action or they mean nothing. When we act on our faith, we are growing. If we don't act on our faith, we are not growing at all. We are shrinking. So each time we feel the consequences of what we have done or have neglected to do, it is another opportunity to learn that when we abandon our faith by not following it in our actions, it results in damage and pain both to others and to ourselves. Yet, we still have a good ending here. Not yet at this time. Yet there's always the possibility of what? Redemption. So in the Old Testament, there is only one other mention of the Nazarite vow after Samson's story that is found in Amos 2, verse 11 and 12. And it is referenced to breaking the Nazarite vow. However, in our brief reading from Matthew, we have tantalizing New Testament reference. So Joseph took Mary and the young Jesus and they went and lived in a town called Nazareth. 
So it was fulfilled, what was said through the prophets, he will be like a Nazarene. There is no Old Testament prophesied that says he will be called a Nazarene. Perhaps it is a reference to a book that is not actually present in our Bible, but yeah, from what we have studied in our book, he is like our, he is like Jesus who also sacrificed his life for others. However, the difference is that um Samson actually sinned against God intentionally. Okay, so now let's try to dive into our lesson deeper. And we're going to do differentiate Israelites and Philistines. So one number one in compatibility, they are not in the same faith. Israelites serve God. Philistines, they have their own way of worshiping it's not actually god who's who whom they are worshiping it's actually idols so it's more of idol worship israelites they worship god the living god whom we are actually serving right now so they are not designed for each other their values are different their religious concepts are different their philosophies of life are totally different so they are incompatible so that is samson and delilah Okay, it's actually also us with unbelievers, but we will dig to that later in a while. So yes, so what happened to the story of Samson and Delilah? Samson plus Delilah spell disaster. Why? For one reason, they have, uh, especially for Samson, he knows this order from God, this command from God. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And we know that that is faith. That is found in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 and 15. Faith and God, they are totally different. So they cannot be together. Yes, even in the Bible from the Genesis to Revelation, this was also mentioned. The first truth that was actually from the creation is actually marriage. So marriage is truth and another um, gift from the creation is also the Sabbath. After sin, when sin entered the world and Adam and Eve were taken out of the Garden of Eden and they had kids, Cain and Abel. Abel stood for truth while Cain took his stand for error. That is found in Genesis 4 verse 1 to 5. So there's two systems, truth and error, okay? When we combine them, it becomes Babylon. When Delilah and Samson are in the same bed, it becomes Babylon. What is Babylon? We call that confusion. So according to what we have read also in our book, in our study guide. So this time I would like to tackle more on another matter regarding Samson and Delilah. We already know that we're not supposed to be yoked together or to be bound together with unbelievers. But here's the question. Why do we do it anyway? Okay, so let's try to answer these questions. What to expect in a relationship with an unbeliever? Okay, why did I raise this question? Because um, we have here a common question. Like, can an Adventist marry a non-Adventist? It has been also discussed in varying perspectives. So young people often ask this question when they are faced with marriages that involves a non-SDA. When this question came up in, a, in one church, a member who opposes such unions cited a passage from Ellen White's writings that purports to forbid such unions. And he quote, never should God's people venture upon forbidden ground. Marriage between believers and unbelievers is forbidden by God. As we know, truth and error cannot be in the same bed. It is a prescription of disaster. So in his interpretation of White's writings, the term unbeliever simply comprises all those without the Adventist faith, the truth. And also, um, maybe we can say unbeliever is actually it's not only about Adventist faith. What I believe also is that even if we are we belong to SDA church, however, we are not fully converted. Our heart is not fully converted. Like we don't really know our God. We are still called unbeliever. Because when we say you are a believer of this faith, of this truth, you are doing what God wants you to do. So who is an unbeliever? There's another word that comes closest in a meaning that is non-believer. Unbeliever, non-believer. So both terms are, are actually synonymous, but with a subtle difference in meaning. What is the difference? So in religion, it says here, an unbeliever may be semantically anyone who does not accept a particular faith or belief system. 
yet believes in other contrary belief systems so to christian to a muslim maybe an unbeliever vice versa or in islam or paganism a non-believer may refer to a person without a belief system so in a more technical sense we may consider atheists as non-believers okay let me quickly remark that most adventist young adults are wary in spousing unbelievers and non-believers their questions are rather on marrying from christian denominations other than adventism this will be another question again but what do we expect in a relationship with an unbeliever so it says here never should god's people venture upon forbidden ground marriage between believers and unbelievers is forbidden by god but too often the unconverted heart follows its own desires so we can say that unbelievers be converted they still follow their own desire and marriages and sanctioned by god are also formed because of this many and many men and women are without hope and without god in the world their noble aspirations are dead by a chain of circumstances they are held in satan's net those who are ruled by passion and impulse will have a bitter harvest to reap in this life and their course may result in the loss of their souls we cannot venture in this forbidden ground um maybe the best example i can give here is that my my mom and my dad my mom is actually a believer so she is an sda but my dad is not however um in the course of time my i would say my mom was blessed with a very good husband even if he is not a believer of adventism but there are still loopholes because my dad was an alcoholic he was an alcoholic so you really suffer i also experienced that kind of suffering i know my mom when whenever my dad will will drink alcohol and he goes home drunk I, it's not a good experience i i would say i don't want believers to experience this because me as a child Kung bata po ako na, na experience ko na yan, ayoko na ng ganun na experience. Ang hirap pag la, naglalasing yung asawa mo. Ang hirap ng ganun na experience. But God is so good. God is so good because now my dad is an Adventist. But it's not really easy to convert this kind of heart of an unbeliever. We have to understand that. They are... um maybe another example would be um some youth when when they want to start a family but they are in different faith sa una sasabihin ng lalaki okay mag, mag church tayo dyan sa church ninyo of course pag boyfriend and girlfriend na relasyon i think it's okay however in the course of time dahil gusto ni lalaki na mapakasalan ka then he would say, okay, magpapa convert ako na Adventist. But after ng kasal, let's say how many years, maybe two or three years, yung faith pa ng lalaki ay well rooted sa ating doctrines or sa ating teachings. No, it wasn't. But if he really searched the Bible, not because of you, then okay, we can say that, yeah, that is um, uh, a belief wherein he can also stand on that belief that Sabbath is truth. Now, what if Hindi? And then he will also go back to his church. That is a sad thing. I would say some of my um, relatives also got into this kind of relationship and they were actually lost because they thought they are strong enough to hold on their faith until hindi na nila kayang magstand as Adventist and they were lost. Okay, so moving on, we are still with in the question of what to expect in a relationship with an unbeliever so those who profess the truth trample on the will of god and marry unbelievers we should know that why they lose his favor and make bitter work for repentance because they actually think they already drop in that marriage and they cannot give it up so they will just continue you know with that cycle the unbelieving may possess an excellent moral character and uncommon punarason mabait naman po siya yung ganyan but the fact that he or she has not answered to the claims of God and has neglected so great salvation is sufficient reason why such a union should not be consummated. I hope that is so clear. The character of the unbelieving 
may be similar to that of the young man to whom Jesus addressed the words, what thing thou lackest? That was the one thing needful. It's very clear also in the Bible, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? From Amos 3 verse 3, which means the happiness and the prosperity of the marriage relation depends upon the unity of the parties. But between the believer and the unbeliever, there is a radical difference of taste, pagkain po yan, at ano pa, <laughs> hindi lang sa pagkain, in many ways, yeah, like lifestyle, they drink and you don't, they smoke, you don't, inclinations and purposes, unbelievers are more of the world than following the word of God, so they are serving two masters, between whom there can be no concord. However pure and correct one's principles may be, the influence of an unbelieving companion will have a tendency to lead away from God. Baka hindi mo rin napansin na ano, na ikaw rin pala ay mahahatak sa kanyang faith that is really a dangerous ground. We thought we are stronger enough in faith, but when it comes to marriage, it's different. So, can't. To walk together unless they are agreed. Amos 3 verse 3. It means you have to walk together. It can't be only one of you walking to the other way and the other one will be walking to the other side of the path. It cannot be like that. You have to walk together. It will be a walk together. When we talk about marriage, it's about two as one, not two and then different path. It cannot be. They should agree. And... Yeah, I would like to share something else here. So what does the scripture say about um, this question? What does the scripture say? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 16, it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light and darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? There is no common ground between God and idols, between God and Satan, between truth and error. There is no common ground. They are totally different, light and darkness. Moving on to Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 to 6. That is also the command that was also given to Samson's mom and also to Samson. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son or take their daughter for your son, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will arouse against you and destroy you suddenly, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. We are very special to our God. We are actually his chosen ones. And when we choose our partner, they should also be what? Be, they should belong to the same faith so you can also follow God together. So with the illustration we have here, number one, when it comes to marriage, this is principle number one, Christ-centeredness. God is in the middle between the husband and wife. So you realize that as the man and woman go closer to Christ, they get closer to each other and that's how it is supposed to be god is love and you will have a healthy relationship together because god is there god is between you and your husband you and your wife he chose her best interest and she chose his best interest and god with them so now let's move on to the early writings or the right from the writings of Ellen G. White. This is a, still about marriage. So marriage between believers and unbelievers is forbidden by God. Those who profess the truth trample on the will of God in marrying unbelievers. They lose his favor and make bitter work for repentance. Napakahirap po. We should not venture in that um, dangerous ground. Many who profess to love and fear God chose to follow the bent of their own minds rather than take counsel of infinite wisdom in a matter which vitally concerns the happiness and well-being of both parties for this world and the next reason judgment and the fear of god are set aside and blind impulse stubborn determination are allowed to control yes so i would like you also to read that from adventist home page 61 so make sure that 
when you marry someone, you are in the same faith and God will actually be in your midst. These are the secrets of a happy marriage. So number one, Christ-centeredness. Number two, we have character. Number three, compatibility. Number four, communication. Number five, commitment. And the last one is chemistry. So now let's move on to our conclusion part. As clearly seen, the Old Testament is precise on instructions concerning marrying non-Israelites or unbelievers. Even though the term unbeliever does not appear in the Old Testament, God's ban on Israel to marry from other nations explains the nature of marriage to the people of God. In the New Testament, the term unbeliever appears in the of Paul as antithesis to Christian values. Paul alludes to the same distinctiveness and holiness of God's people. I have just understand this presence as blueprints for a holistic Christian marriage. Marriage between an Adventist and unbeliever is strictly discouraged. Thank you so much, and I hope we have enjoyed. Ayan. Meron po ba akong voice? Yes, Lorraine. Okay, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that was so a very powerful message, right? So, yung message po ng ating speaker today is, yung na-quote ko dun is, communion of different faith can lead to disaster, or actually, it will become a disaster. So, um, napakaganda nung ano, no, nung, um, very powerful yung message ng ating speaker today. He, she doesn't, hindi niya lang pinapag-usapan yun about sa marriage, but also yung faith natin mismo na kapag um, if we communion with the darkness is that it will become a truly disaster. So napakaganda. Two dalawang bagay na napaka-importante sa ating buhay. It's the marriage and our faith, right? So thank you so much for that beautiful message, um, Sister Benelin, that was a powerful message. We praise God for that. And today, we encourage everyone also to give the reflection sa ating napakinggan na message ngayong umaga. So, uh, I encourage everyone to um, comment down below sa mga makapapanood pa mamaya. You can comment also your reflection kahit hindi kayo nakasali sa live. And uh, we will also share our reflections today na nasa mga stream yard. So, um, let's give our takeaways uh, in this topic. So, sino po ang magsisimula? At Ayan, Ayan. Good morning sa ating mga manonood ngayon, ngayong umaga. At uh, napakabuti ng Panginoon ulit sapagkat siya ang gumisin sa atin. Napakaganda nga, uh, uh, Lorraine, ang ating, mga, ang ating topic ngayon, kung saan talaga ano, na ipinakita ng Panginoon ano, na talagang ang marriage, kapag papasok ka sa isang relasyon, ano, ay talagang kailangan dapat ay mm, yung talagang deeper yung relationship mo sa Panginoon. May danger eh, di ba, Lorraine? Ay yung danger na sinabi ni Sister Benelin kanina, yung danger na kapag baka naman yung yung plano ng Panginoon na i, na gagawin sa iyo kung minsan ano na ibibigay niya yung partner mo tapos ikaw naman ikaw talagang ikaw ay hanap pa ng mga hanap pa yung gusto mo ito yung gusto ko kasi kailangan yung masusunod ito yung gusto kong guy ito yung gusto kong uh, lalaki na mapapakasawa ko pero napakaganda pala ano na kailangan din natin as may experience kasi <clears throat> ako nung itong kabata ako ay maaga pong kasawa as may experience talaga ay kulang ako sa relasyon sa sa Panginoon pero I'm very thankful thankful kasi oh uh, hindi yung uh, yung pinili yung pini yung binigay ng uh, ng Panginoon para sa akin ay talagang kahit hindi siya hindi siya Adventist ganyan ay talagang alam mo yon kung pupunta papasok ka sa isang relasyon kailangan handa ka Lorraine kailangan ikaw mismo ay maging handa sa relasyon na yun baka naman kung papasok ka sa isang relasyon ay yung yung ma, yung mahanapan mahanapan natin ay yung yun nga yung sabi diyan na incompatible tayo kasi hindi na hindi hindi siya yung karelasyon na hindi yung hindi siya yung tipong ka religion natin ano kasi kung minsan ang danger 
baka yun ang problema sa ating iglesia ngayon, ano, mga kabataan. Kung ating nakikita, baka naman ang iyong, yung kapag ipapasok ka sa isang relasyon, ay ikaw yung mahihila. Ano, kapag wala ka doon sa deeper relationship ng, ng, sa ating Panginoon, baka naman instead na instead na ikaw ang manghihila sa kanya dahil sa wala kang wala kang malalim na relasyon sa Panginoon ay ikaw na tuloy ang ang nanghihila yun po ang danger ng hindi maki, uh, hindi natin mismo same religion uh, religion ang ating uh, ang ating mga kapartner so i know uh, it's a very kwan po ito ngayong mga kapatid yung mga mga nanonood po ngayong umaga na talagang kailangan po natin habang uh, ab, pagpapasok po tayo sa relasyon, eh kailangan, kumusta po ang relasyon natin sa Panginoon? Malalim po ba? May kilala ako na, ano na to, na isang yung mag-boyfriend, mag-girlfriend pa sila. Eh talagang itong, itong, baba, itong, itong lalaki ay hindi siya, hindi ito Adventist. Itong babae ay Adventist naman. And until nung nagkinasal na sila, until nung, kin- kinasal, nung kinasal na sila, ay wala na. Parang na, na, na hila itong babae na ganyan. So, napaka, ano, parang kung iisipin natin, ano, parang napaka, naka, nakakalungkot isipin na kung yun man ang binig, uh, kung inalaw ng Panginoon, ito ah, ito ang, uh, kapag inalaw ng Panginoon na yun ang ating magiging partner in the future, sana naman, ano, ang uh, tayo ay hindi hindi tayo mahila. Tayo sana yung tayo sana yung hila sa kanila. Tayo sana yung makikita sana sa sa loob ng pamilya na tayo yung na tayo ay malaki ang malakas ang impluwensya sa ating mga uh, kapartner. Kasi alam niyo, 'di ba, mar- marami tayong kilala, Lorraine, ngayon ang hirap kasi both Adventist yung ina, yung ama ng Adventist tapos sa nag sa nag nagsisimba yung isa nagsisimba sa Catholic tapos yung isa di ba napakahirap pati yung anak tuloy ay parang ano na to hindi na nila alam kung saan sila pupunta ang ang mga anak tuloy ay nawawala sila nawawalan na sila ng direksyon kung saan talaga sila pupunta at doon na nagkakaroon ng broken family kung minsan di ba kung ating kung ating kung mga iba hindi ko naman sinasabing lahat ay nagka, nag nagkakaganito pero nagkakaganito pero di ba kung ating i-observe ang ating surroundings sa Talagang ang hirap, ang hirap as my experience talaga. Kasi ako, ito ay aking mismo testimony. Ako po ay hindi ko po kinakatiya. Ako po ay isang singer. Ako po ay talagang, talagang, ang pang, alam mo yon yung sa edad pa lang na instead na nandun ka na nag-aaral pa lang ay talagang, ayun na yun, inuna ko. Inuna ko yung aking, inuna ko yung aking pakikipagrelasyon sa eh, hindi ko naman ka- hindi, hindi ko naman ka relisyonan pero sabi nga nila ano talagang kapag nagkasala tayo i-confess natin sa Panginoon babaguhin niya tayo and I'm very thankful kasi uh, sa sa panahon uh, sa uh, sa at uh, sa relationship namin ngayong mag-asawa I'm very thankful kasi that ikaw in nasa man, yung relasyon mo sa Panginoon ay malalim para sa ganun, ikaw ang hila sa kapartner mo. So, ayan, um, baka may masabi din si Carlo, yan bagong gising si Carlo. Kayo, ano naman ang mga uh, sa tingin nyo na reflection nyo sa ating pag-aaral ngayong umaga? Okay, thank you so much for that, Ate Lovely, for that beautiful reflection. Praise God. Um, do you want first, Carlo, na ikaw munang mag-reflection? Sige, ikaw muna mauna. Do you hear us? Um, sorry, medyo medyo naglalag kasi yung computer. So, sige, medyo uh, mauna, mauna na ako. So, sabi nga kanina ng uh, ating speaker is Delilah, uh, Samson and Delilah are not really compatible because Israelites and Philistines are not designed for each other, sabi niya kanina. So, ma- ma- may mga mababasa rin tayo dito is um, ditong mga scriptures katulad ng mga katulad ng pinakita kanina na 
2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 15 and also Deuteronomy 7, 3 to 6. So, believers and verse, sabi nga, is not, ver it's not really compatible. Iba ang kinalakhan ng believers at non-believers. Yung non-believers, syempre, asahan mo na nanggaling yan sa, ano, sa makasalanan. <laughs> makasalanan. Pero hindi naman lahat. May mga non-believers din na uh, makikita mo, ma maganda ang kanyang uh, mga gawain. No? So, sabi nga dun sa, uh, kung maalala ko, may study tayo noon sa, uh, dun sa chapter ng, uh, sa book ng Rome, na hindi lang naman ano, minsan sila pa nga yung ano eh, na uh, ang mga may magagandang gawain. Pero talagang, sina, pero dito sa aaral natin, sinabing hindi talaga compatible kasi hihilain at hihilain ka sa uh, sa ano uh, sa makamundong bagay. So, hindi naman lahat pero uh, mostly, ito ang nangyayari sa ating mga Adventista. Pero di, na, di, di dapat tayo uh, papatalo. Uh, kung tayo man ay uh, kung tayo man ay nagasawa ng hindi adventista or hindi pananampalataya ay aralan natin sila sapagkat yun ang sinabi ng ating Panginoon na dapat nating aralan ang mga ito para malaman nila ang katotohanan at kayo ay uh, sabi nga sa Amos 3 verse 3 na uh, to walk together uh, they be agreed sabi niya sabi dito is dapat magkasama kayo hindi magkahiwalay maalala ko ng high school ako is uh, share ko lang to so <laughs> so nagbibiruan kami sabi sabi ng ng mga barkada barkada ko kasi mga <laughs> ano uh, naglolok kami is wala hindi kayo compatible kasi iba yung religion niya <laughs> parang gano'n. Yung mga uh, mga paglolokan no, namin nung ano, hindi ko, wala, hindi kayo compatible. Pero hindi na ako magme-mention ng mga ibang sekta, pero gano'n talaga. Uh, so, ayun. So, dapat ang uh, uh, dapat ang pagkakaisa natin, sabi nga dito, para hindi tayo maging uh, isang incompatible sa isang relasyon, lalo na kung may boyfriend at girlfriend kayo dyan, ay dapat ang pinaka uh, pinaka sentro ng inyong pag-ibigan ay si Kristo. Sapagkat siya lamang ang makakapagbigay ng uh, true love sa inyo. Siya lang ang pag-ibig. Sabi nga dun sa ano is God is love. So yun lang yung masyashare. So Ate Lorraine, go ahead. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Brother Carlo, for that beautiful reflection also. So, comment lang po yung mga nasa StreamYard or, I mean, yung nasa live sa uh, Facebook. Then, kung uh, magre-replay po kayo is that you can comment also your reflection as well. So, I will just give also my short takeaway. So, takeaway. So, ang sabi din sa Galatians 5 verse 24, kasi dalawa yung bagay na natukoy ng ating ano, natuk na, ating napag-aralan ngayon. It's about our, um, first yung marriage and about our faith. So, I just want to go to marriage first before the faith. So, di ba sa marriage is that um, I, as a youth also sa akin, as my personal con conversion or conviction also, uh, when I saw when, nung nakita ko mismo yung when there are two uh, believe uh, I mean my unbeliever and believer that um nagsama is that it will become a truly disaster and I can I based on my observation on my own observation is totoo po yun kasi uh, sadly um of course marami tayong nakikita even inside my family or kahit hindi ko nabanggitin pero ano it's really sad makita ko yung talagang difference if you're both believer na nagsama. Well, so una siguro, yung, 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 ganyan yung sabi nga nung speaker natin, parang sa una, yeah, parang nagpapakita ano, pero as the days goes by, doon mo makikita yung pag-uugali niya. At kung hindi siya rooted kay Christ, ma malay mo masasaktan ka ng taong yun. ba? So, we should always, uh, kapag, if 
makipagrelasyon man tayo or makipag-asawa tayo is dapat din yung uh, may rooted, I mean, not just in faith, I mean, uh, in a religion na magkapareha, but the faith, yung faith, yung rooted, ka, rooted kayo mismo, dalawa sa Panginoon. Because kahit man magkaparehas kayo ng ano, uh, religion, if yung faith, yung pinaniniwalaan ninyo, yung uh, mas dapat deeper yung relationship ninyo sa Panginoon, iwala din po. So, um, as a youth, yung uh, panalangin ko din is that, Lord, um, pinakita mo po sa akin yung realities of life. That's why, tulungan mo po ako para hindi ako maging kagaya nila. Tulungan mo po ako para yung purpose ko sa yung gusto mong gawin sa akin in the future at yung tao na yun na pinili mo sa akin is magagawa talaga namin. So, um, as I said, I am not worrying about it because I really believe that God will help me. God will lead me to that. And of course, yung also faith natin, di ba? In Galatians 5 verse 24, And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. So, ibig sabihin po ng mga kaibigan, hindi din pwede na nabubuhay tayo tayo in light and as well nabubuhay tayo sa darkness. Hindi po pwede 50-50 mga kaibigan. So, uh, sabi doon, wala pong ganon. Dapat, we should choose Because hindi po, gaya ng sinabi ng ating uh, speaker, there, we should not serve two master. Hindi pwede po ganun. Iisa lang dapat po yung ating pipiliin na master. At yun po yung ating isa sa kabuhayan. Pero wag po kayong mag-alala kasi uh, kapag hindi po naman natin kaya, is tutulungan tayo ng Panginoon. That's the power of God. Sana isipin po natin yung mga kaibigan. If we, in our weakness, sabi nga ng Panginoon, in our weakness, God will strengthen us. Diba mga kahibigan? So that was a beautiful learning. Actually, parang yung topic na to is parang uh, kami yung nag-host dito. Pero actually, sa amin din talaga yung messages na mga ito. So, we have also uh, the comment here. I uh, will read it. Or, yes, I will read it. Ang sabi dito ni Sister Mimisa, Yung sabi ni Sis Benilin, kapag nakipagrelasyon sa unbeliever, ibig sabihin, ikaw mismo ay hindi pa fully converted. That's very true. Kaya pag ganun pala, ay focus prayer talaga tayo at kailangang ma-advisean agad para madirect sa love ni Jesus. Sana, pa, sana para ma-realize niya na may mali sa pakikipagrelasyon niya. That is very true. Kasi sabi nga nila, pati sa relasyon, sabi, pati sa relasyon, we should also, um, ano, invite God in it because He's the author of love, of our love story. So, uh, Ate Love, can you read the second um, second comment of Ate Marisa? Mm-mm. Sabi dito, may dalawang option kayo, dear youth, to pray hard before marriage as you pray for the right partner chosen by God Himself or to pray harder during marriage, praying for your spouse to be converted. Both are noble basta ending pa rin sana kay Christ. But remember, God loves you and don't want you to experience unnecessary brokenness. This world is already broken. Sinful na tayo. Malaking adjustment gagawin mo pag mag-asawa ka na. Huwag mo na dagdagan pa yung hira. Tama nga naman, ano, sabi nga nila, sabi nga nila, the more na yung dito, yung sabi ni Sister Marisa nila na, Pray hard before the marriage. Siyempre, talagang papa, ipapanalangin mo yan sa Panginoon. Or kapag uh, during the marriage ay talagang inalaw ng Panginoon na ang iyong kapartner ay hindi mo mismo ka religion, anong gagawin mo? Yung talagang everyday na luluhod ka sa Panginoon, na talagang, Panginoon, thank you, binigay mo itong, inalaw mo itong itong partner ko na ito ang magiging partner ko ano so kailangan nating kailangan nating ano na to kailangan natin talagang luhuran every day every night na talagang sana yung alam mo yung Lorraine na talagang dapat tayo ay yung may malalita yung relasyon sa Panginoon at napakabuti nga ng Panginoon ano kasi talagang tayo ay kahit ano yung ating mga kas- ating napagdaanan yung ating kasalanan ang Panginoon ay handa niya tayong Uh, ano ito, yakapin sa at yakapin niya, uh, handa niya tayong yakapin at handa niya tayong talagang, oh, Lorraine, ano, yan na ba talaga ang decision mo? Di ba talagang bibigyan ka pa niya ng, bibigyan ka pa ng warning, ano, yan na ba talaga this uh, 
ready ka na ba dyan sa papasukin mong relasyon, relasyon na yan. So, napakaganda po mga kaibigan ng ating, mga, ang ating uh, napag-aralan ngayong umaga. So, we need strength to perform God's will. Sabi na dito, ano yung strength ni strength ni uh, Samson, yung kanyang buhok, nandoon lahat ang kanyang lakas. Pero nung pinutol, pinutol nila yung buhok ni Samson, doon na yung, ano na to, yung kahinaan niya, ano, na talagang nakita yung kahinaan niya. Pero kagaya sa atin ngayong, ngayong umaga mga kapatid, na ano ba yung strength natin? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung mga kalakasan natin na binigay ng ating Panginoon? Na kung minsan ano ay marami tayong mga mga binigay uh, maraming mga kagaya ng mga talents, mga gift na binigay ng ating Panginoon. Na yun ang ating gagamitin sa pagsilbi sa kanya. Na yun ang gagamitin natin sa pag uh, pag uh, uh, ano na to yung paghatak sa ating mga sa mga kaibigan. Ano? Kaya wag nating hayaan na sana yung ating strength ay ano na to, yung ating strength ay ano ba yung ibig sabihin ay yung yung ating strength ay gagamitin lang natin sa ating own desire na kagaya ni Samson di ba ginamit niya sa own desire niya bakit hindi natin bakit hindi natin i-commit sa ating Panginoon itong strength ko to Panginoon tulungan mo ako na ikaw ang gagamit sa akin itong strength ko to gamitin mo ako ano napakaganda yon na talagang ang Panginoon natin ay napakabuti sa atin kaya uh, it's a reminder sa ating lahat na kung papasok man tayo sa relasyon, ito eh, talagang, yun nga, kaya kung pwede sana, ay eh, talagang yung karelisyonan natin. Ano? Para naman sa ganun ay, uh, para sa, naman, sa ganun ay talagang, hindi, uh, kung papasok ka man sa relasyon na talagang, hindi kayo, hindi, 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 hindi ka, incompatible kayo, dapat talagang ikaw, ay may uh, meron kayong malalim na relasyon sa Panginoon para sa ganun hindi lang ikaw yung basta-basta nakikila sa worldly ganun and doon nagkakaroon ng disaster talaga no rain so ayan Carlo at ang ating oras ay 6 na <laughs> okay so we will give now our final takeaways Carlo so unahin ko muna gusto ko kasi yung sinabi ng ating speaker kanina I'm sorry I'm having my but uh, gusto ko yung um, sinabi ng ating speaker kanina, sabi niya about marriage. If he will search the scripture not because of you, but because he is truly converted. Napakaganda doon. Ibig sabihin doon, uh, si Kristo yung inuuna niya kaysa sa'yo. Diba? When, example, in, in marriage, before kayo mag-asawa is that, when he is truly converted, I think, uh, I think that relationship, I don't think, but um, God uh, will help that relationship to grow because rooted kayong dalawa sa Panginoon. So, napakaganda, napakaganda. I mean, yun yung parang sa akin, yun yung totoong nakakakilig. When your husband will, um, alam yun, mas rooted kay Kristo, lalo yun, lalong yun yung magpapa-in-love sa, sa iyo sa, sa asawa. Kaysa naman ikaw yung lagi niyang inaano pero wala sa Chris, wala si Kristo, di ba? So, I think that's um that's uh one of nung nakita ko sa ating pag-aaral ngayon sa na sinabi din ng ating uh na sinabi ng ating uh, speaker ngayon. So, uh, Carlo, do you have any uh, takeaways before we um pray? So, uh yes, um so, kagaya ng uh, ating story ngayon na si Samson and Delilah. Si Samson, ang source ng kanyang strength ay ang kanyang buhok. So, nung naputol ang kanyang buhok, nawala, naging ordinary siyang tao. So, kagaya sa atin, kapag pinutol natin ang relasyon natin kay Kristo, ano ang mangyayari? Wala. Kasi, uh, kung tayo ay maputulan ng relasyon kay Kristo, talagang tayo ay manghihina. Wala tayong kaya dito sa mundo sapagkat napakalakas ng, ng tukso at saka itong kaaway kung wala si Kristo sa'yo. Kaya kailangan natin si Kristo. Pero sabi nga ng ating speaker kanina, belief must be backed up by action. So ang ating paniniwala ay 
kailangan daw ng action. So, sabi nga, faith that works. So, ayun ang masasabi ko. So, Ate Lovely. Ayan, thank you, Carlo. So, last takeaway and reflection ko ngayong umaga is keep Christ at the center of your life. Habang tayo pa ay uh, bata pa, nasa youth age, ay talagang hayaan natin ang Panginoon ang gagawa sa iyong buhay. Hayaan mo na siya yung a, mag, a, uh, siyang magpapaandar sa iyong manibela. Huwag ikaw. Ano? Kasi once na ikaw ang magpapaandar sa iyong manibela, napatungo sa iyong gustong pupuntahan, naku po, napaka-dangerous yun. Pero kung hahayaan natin na ang Panginoon ang magdadrive sa ating manibela, tiyak na magiging smooth ang daan na patungo sa magandang Uh, uh, way na inyong pupuntahan sa lalo na sa magiging future mo in future mo yung magkakaroon ka ng pamilya alam mo yun napakasarap mabuhay mga kapatid na kapag ang si Kristo ang inuna mo sa iyong buhay napakasarap na isipin na kapag papasok ka sa marriage ay andyan ang Panginoon siya ang inuna mo siya ang magagayad sa iyo siya ang papakinggan mo ang kanyang will ang susundin mo pati susunod na yan sa generation ang mga anak mo until alam mo yun napakagandang isipin ano na uh, talagang pati yung partner mo ay kahit anumang bagyo yan na darating sa iyong buhay kahit anumang alon yan sa darating sa iyong buhay mga kapatid hindi ka basta-basta mag kasi na kay Kristo ka na kaya sana mga kapatid na yung umaga huwag nating hayaan na ang na ang kaaway ay papasok sa ating sa sa pagbubuo ng pamilya. Hayaan natin na si Kristo ang ating ibuhay sa araw-araw. Ayun. Amen. Thank you so much. So ating nakita mga kaibigan na actually yung story ni Samson and Delilah it's also reflects our story sometimes because uh, we also um alam niyo yun nakikipagrelasyon tayo sa 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 kamun- sumundo, ba? Diba? And nahihiwalay tayo sa Panginoon. So, I think this is also a, li- a lesson not just about marriage but as a whole na nakita natin if uh, if talagang yung bagay na hindi magkatugma is when they met each other, it, it will become a bubble and it will become a, alam nyo yun, magulo or incompatible gaya ng ating title ngayon. So, I think God is really, ano, napakabuti ng Panginoon na ating napag-aaralan ito ngayon na even sa story ni Samson and Delilah is makita natin may napakalaking lesson na ga, sinasabi ng Panginoon sa atin na ganito. So, you know, in this way is parang nakikita ko God is saying I love you para hindi natin tularan man yung mga mistakes ni Samson na nagawa niya in the past. So, let's pray, let's also pray for that sa ating mga tagapanood at sa ating na nandito. So again, thank you so much for your participation and thank you din sa mga nanonood sa ating um, Uh, Facebook Live. So again, uh, we encourage everyone to join again next Wednesday sa mga late gumising. Replay lang po kayo at mag-comment ng inyong reflection at babasahin po namin. May live replay sa YouTube channel sa 12 noon kasama ng mga live na sasagot sa inyong mga katanungan. Please like, follow, and subscribe para updated kayo sa mga susunod na mga live at mga videos. Our next episode will be uh, with Pastor Herson Idai, Chapter 11, Who is the boss? Or yung part one, the boss and roles of a husband. Pag-aaralan po natin yan. So I think this is a um, gentleman, uh, mga gentleman yung mga papasok dito. So uh, for our closing prayer, may I call uh, Ate Lovely for uh, to close uh, our devotion this morning. Ayan, manalangin tayo. Aman naming banal sa oras na ito. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat at kayo po ang aming nakita ulit ngayong umaga. Madaming salamat Panginoon sa tuwing kami po ay nagdidesisyon sa aming sarili ay kayo po ang laging nagririmay po sa amin kung ano po ang tamang desisyon na aming gagawin. Panginoon sa oras na ito, nakagaya ng aming pinag-aralan Panginoon na ang strength ni Samson Panginoon ay inyo pong gamitin, gamitin niyo po kami Panginoon na upang, upang sa ganun Panginoon ay kayo po ang laging makita namin sa araw-araw. 
na wa Panginoon sa aming pagdidesisyon lalo ng mga kabataan sa mga nanonood ngayon Panginoon na, pag, na tulungan niyo po na wa kami na kayo po ang unahin upang sa gayon Panginoon ay sa aming pagdidesisyon sa aming paglalakbay sa mundong ito ay maging smooth ang aming uh, way na pupuntahan Lord tulungan din nawa ang mga taong uh, sa kanilang sarili ay sinunod nilang kanilang mga kagustuhan. Nawa Panginoon, tulungan sila na uh, kung ano man ang napili nila na magiging kapartner, Panginoon, tulungan nawa sila, Panginoon, na kayo po ang hanapin, na kayo po ang unahin sa bawat yugto ng kanilang buhay. Lord, tulungan ng bawat isa sa amin na ang iyong pagpapala, ang inyo pong ibuho sa amin. At patawarin po kami sa, uh, sa aming pagkakasala. Ito po ang uh, aming samot dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, uh, Sister or Ate Lovely. And uh, susunod po sa live na ito ang Let's Study His Word. Pinag-aaralan natin ang Book of Leviticus. Abangan or natapos na pala yan. So let's remember mga kapatid. To spread love as it says in 1 John 3 verse 18, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. God bless everyone and see you again next Wednesday. Bye po!